All right, welcome back to Sports Line tonight. Again, phone lines are open 737-7767. If you'd like to jump in on the conversation, we can go any way you want tonight. Anything you want to talk about, just bring it up. Call us up and be a part of the show here. Cubs up 7 nothing on the Indians in Cleveland. Game 6, Chris Bryant with a homer in the top of the first. Then you have an Addison Russell a bloop ball into right field that the Indians miscommunicated on. Two runs scored there. That made it three to nothing. Ben Zobris continues his toward pace in this series for the Cubs. Russell has added to that. Cubs now lead it seven nothing early on in this game after a Russell grand slam. That's probably all she wrote for game six, frankly. When you look at what the Cubs have in Jake Arrieta on the mound, last year's Cy Young Award winner, and their bullpen, it looks very much like we are headed to a game seven tomorrow night in Cleveland for all the marbles. So that'll certainly be interesting. And the ratings for this World Series have been phenomenal. I don't know if you've seen any part of this or not, but more than... 32% more people watched the World Series Game 5 Sunday night in Chicago than watched the Cowboys and Eagles in an NFC East rivalry game on Sunday night football. And when you look at sports ratings over the last decade or so, Major League Baseball and the World Series has not stacked up to Sunday Night Football in the NFL. When they've gone head-to-head, -head, historically, the NFL does very, very well, and people are asking the questions, what's wrong with baseball? What's wrong with the World Series that it's getting outdrawn by a Week 7 or Week 8 NFL game? Not this time. That is partly the power of the Cubs, I think, and the storyline of 108 years to be in this position and win the potentially win the World Series. I, I think that's a huge, huge part of it. Don't get me wrong. But I think this also continues the trend as we look around the NFL this year of ratings going down. If you look at all of the primetime slots, which are the big national games, they're, the ratings are going down. Thursday night is down. Sunday night is down. Monday night football is down rating wise and it's not by a couple of percentage points it's double digits down across the board the only ratings that are staying flat or getting better are local teams here in nashville for instance the titans are doing well the the rating they had last thursday night here in nashville was close to a 25. that that is a terrific rating and one of the best ratings we've seen for a titans game in the last two or three seasons as they've really struggled, uh, that's as good as it's been for a while. But if you look around at the national games that you get that aren't involving your local team, people just aren't watching, not watching at the same rate that they have for such a long period of time. And I, I think there's a few things to this. I think the NFL is finally catching up to itself. For so long, we thought this league was completely Teflon because people wanted to watch football. And I think they do, but I'll tell you what, when you look at the college football rank ratings, they're ranking right up there with what they've always done, or even better. They're growing in some levels. The NFL's down by a lot. Why is that? I think it's the political nature of what the NFL has become. If you look and everything that's happened in the last few years. You've lost some star players. You know, there's no Peyton Manning. Tom Brady was suspended. By the way, let's talk about the flake gate and the distraction and the circus that that was that rubbed a lot of people wrong. Some of the other off-field incidents in the NFL, Ray Rice, Adrian Peterson, Greg Hardy, several other instances like that, how the NFL handled that how they punish certain players for on-field and off-field actions. Legislating some of the hitting out of the game. Being inconsistent in how they've punished guys for hits. Sometimes it's a big punishment. Other times it's nothing. 
And I think the last straw, so to speak, was Colin Kaepernick's national anthem protest. And then other guys following suit in some ways. People don't want their sports to be political. People want their sports to be a release from the grind of their daily job, the stresses of paying bills and putting food on the table for the family every night. People want football and sports to be fun. They want it to be a release. And especially in this year when everything is so political and you're talking about an election cycle, that made the NFL too political. And I think it also took a lot away from the common man. There were people who looked out there and said, that's part of his work requirement. The NFL wants their players on the sideline before the game standing for the national anthem. It's just part of the routine before a game. And now he's breaking decorum or code for the protest. And other guys are doing it as well. I think a lot of people looked at it and said, if I would break decorum in that way at my office, I would face punishment or I may not have a job anymore. And the NFL's letting him do that, letting him make a political statement through their medium. I think several people had issues with that. You got to remember when you look at sports fans and the demographic as a whole, largely it's a moderate to conservative group. It's not a super liberal sports culture. And the NFL has treated a lot of its dealings in recent years in a very liberal manner. And I think it's worn tired on some of its fans. Look, it is still the most popular league, certainly in this country, maybe the world. And soccer might be in that if you look at a worldwide equation. But certainly the most popular and most profitable sports league going right now. Um, but they're not maximizing the revenue in the way they have in recent years this year. And those ratings aren't good. And to me, that speaks to a growing problem that the NFL has a disconnect with their fan base. And all of this stuff has come to a head, and you see it now with the ratings. Titans locally, though, they are picking up. They are picking up in the ratings because they are winning. For the first time in five years, since 2011, the Titans have four wins eight weeks into the season. Sit at 4-4, four and four, heading to San Diego on Sunday. A 325 kickoff that you can watch, help out our ratings, over on News Channel 5. Big win last Thursday night, 36-22 over Jacksonville. Just a dominant performance. Probably the best performance start to finish I've seen from the Titans since I've been here in six years covering this team. After the game, I caught up with one of the defensive stars, Brian Arakbo, to talk about the defensive effort in that game and where this Titans team stands right now here at the midway point of the year. This is about as good as you're going to get, period. You know, um, all, both phases were, were excellent. You know, um, that's, and that's what we need to do. That's what we're capable of, just being dominant on both sides of the ball, getting off the field, getting the ball back to our offense, and then going down there and scoring. That's what we feed off each other, and it was perfect in that first half. Some people are going to say it's the Jaguars. They've only won two games, but that's a pretty good passing attack when they can get going. How are you able to force five punts and five possessions? In the Man, uh, just overall team effort, guys flying around. Getting Bortles, uh, Bortles rattled a little bit. Guys tackling. It's a combination of everything, man. Everything just went right. Last year, this team only won three games. You've got four wins already at the midway point. What's that say about the direction this team it's is in? It's definitely trending up, trending in the, in, in the right direction. We have been winning, winning a lot uh, recently, and uh, this team is completely different, though. The coaches to the players, the whole psyche of this team is about winning. And that's what John Robinson and, and Coach Malarkey uh, introduced to us when they first got here. So it's been huge for us, and we're definitely going in the right direction. And you're in a race now. What's the mindset going to the second half of the year? Finish strong, game by game. We can't really worry about whatever the people are doing. We definitely notice it, but we got to take it game by game. 
Okay, Hutton, here we are at the halfway point. Titans sit at four and four. It's about what most of us expected, right? The roster is better. They've been competitive in pretty much every game. On the surface, it seems like the arrow is pointing up for this team. Do you agree? I agree. And the reason for that is they are building off of what the message was all offseason. They wanted to protect their quarterback. They've certainly been doing that through the first eight weeks of the season. The offensive line has been phenomenal. They are running the football. And I think over the back stretch, they can get Derrick Henry more involved. We'll see more of that thunder and thunder combination, I think, over the final eight games of the season. Yeah, also Kendall Wright being back and healthy, really helping that pass game. All right. Got a road game next Sunday in San Diego. Looking forward to that. I know you are. I am. Yeah. Certainly a winnable game for the Titans, but the Chargers are not a team you can take lightly, right? Well, they've been in games despite their record. They've the offense has really gotten going early in games. They just haven't finished and they have an offensive coordinator. You may have heard about him. Ken Wisenhunt loves to throw the football. They can also run it though with Melvin Gordon. That's the key in week nine for the Tennessee Titans. Stopping their run and forcing Wisenhunt to be one dimensional with their veteran quarterback in Phillip Rivers. Yeah, Rivers always a dangerous quarterback. Meaningful Titans football in the month of November. How cool is that? Haven't had that in a while. Check out our man Hutton on 104.5 The Zone and Titans Radio. Thanks as always for being here. Great being here. Thank you. Thank you guys. Good stuff on the first half of the season there. And Brian Arakpo, who we heard from before that, a huge part of this Titans pass rush that has meant so much to the defense. There are still question marks in the secondary, especially when you had Parrish Cox and Rashad Johnson out with injuries in the Jacksonville game. But that pass rush, especially over the last month when the Titans have won three of four games, has been terrific. One of the best units in football. They have 22 sacks on the season. They have 16 in the last four games. So Rackpo leads the way with seven. He's among the league leaders. Derek Morgan now has five and a half sacks in just the last four weeks. And then you throw in, I think it's four sacks from Jarrell Casey as well. This is a group, those three guys in particular, that really get after quarterbacks and can harass the other team in their passing game. And that's going to be important as we now look to the third quarter of the season. Because on the schedule in front of the Titans, you have this trip to San Diego on Sunday against Phillip Rivers and a very potent passing attack from the Chargers. Then you have Aaron Rodgers and the Packers coming to town in two weeks. And then in three weeks, you get the rematch with Andrew Luck and the Colts in Indianapolis. So the next three weeks, you have three quarterbacks that are probably, as people look at it, top five, six, seven quarterbacks in the National Football League right now. That's who the Titans have in front of them. So that pass rush is going to be key if they can continue this hot play from recently and win some of these games as they start the third quarter of the season. I think this game in San Diego on Sunday is huge because it's a chance to go above 500, start the second half of the season with a win. And if you do that, Packers at home, then two road games. I think there's pretty much a good likelihood that at worst you enter the month of December at 6-6 six and six at 500. And if the Titans can do that, even with tough games against the Broncos and the Chiefs, you end the season with the Jaguars again and then the Texans in the final game of the year. So two division games there at the end that if you can win, you have a shot to get to 500 for the year. And in this division this year, the AFC South, 500 might do it, especially with that final game against the Texans. If the Titans are 7-9 and nine going into that game against the Texans, I think there's a real shot that they could win that game and win the division and get into the playoffs. So to me, this is a huge opportunity on Sunday in San Diego to go out and start the second half on the right foot. And it's kind of a statement game, too. For everybody who's wondered if the Titans have really taken that step to be a much better team, so far, they've won against the teams they were sort of quote-unquote supposed to beat, the bad teams. Now, that's progress because in recent years, the Titans have been the bad team. So the fact that they're beating up on the Browns or beating up on the Jaguars is a step in the right direction for this team. But the question now is, okay, you're kind of a middle-of-the-road NFL team right now. You're 500, definition of that. Can you take the next step to be a winning team? Can you take the next step to be a playoff team? 
that's what's in front of the Titans in the second half. And I know the Chargers are just three and five, but they've been in every game so far this year. They could be a one or a two loss team pretty easily with a few plays going the other way or better performances in the fourth quarter. This is a pretty good team with a potent offense on the road. It's an opportunity for the Titans to go out there and make a statement that they can win. And, and don't forget just kind of the recent demons of this franchise. The Titans have it won in San Diego in six or seven tries. Their last win against the Chargers out West was 1990 with Warren Moon at quarterback and the team was still called the Oilers. That's what the Titans can change this weekend. This is a different team. They've been telling us that. I think the proof is in the pudding in what they've done in the last few weeks. Another opportunity to show that on Sunday in San Diego. Go beat the Chargers and people around the league, not just here locally, but people around the league are going to start to take the Titans for real. Got to take a break. Still, our phone lines are open. 737-7767 is the number. Jump in on the program tonight. We'll also hear from Mike Malarkey and Butch Jones on the tumultuous week going on in Knoxville. Stay tuned. You're watching Sportsline right here on News Channel 5+. Plus.